hello everybody. Thank you very much for being here. And I will also thank the organizer for such a nice colloquium. So what I want to do today will be a little bit different from what was done so far, uh, in the sense that uh, as I don't have a bachelor thesis, I cannot speak about my bachelor thesis. And so uh, what I will do is something more recreation, recreational. And uh, in this optic, I will speak about game theory and more precisely about price of anarchy and price paradox. Um, and actually I will speak, speak much more about price of anarchy than price paradox. So uh, as I said before, uh, I, it is a topic of game theory. And game theory is actually, one can define it as a science, as a science that tries to model human behavior in the context of game. And what is actually a game? And that's the definition to be a little bit pedantic of strategic the game, not a game in general, but we will keep this definition for today's talks. And so a strategic game consists of n player. When I say rational, I mean player that always choose uh, their, pref their uh, preferences. Um, and to each of these player, we associate actually a set of possible strategies that this player can have. And uh, for this set of strategy, um, it would be nice that this set of strategy uh, would be totally ordered. And in this optic, we would want actually uh, to have a utility function, UE, which assigned to each strategy a real value so that the set of strategies is ordered. And it's totally ordered in the sense that uh, the more we uh, the greater value a strategy has, the more the player will uh, play it. So that's what a game is. And now we will dive into our first example of a game, which is just an illustration and an illustration of the Nash equilibrium. So our first game is actually we want to pair a play um, employee with companies. I'm sorry for the very bad um, picture, but so it is. Uh, so what we want, our question is actually, we want to uh, pair employee which have preferences, a list of preferences in which companies they prefer to work and companies which have also a list of preferences with which employees they want to work. And actually our question now is, does there exist a pairing always exists a pairing uh, where everyone can be as happy as they can be. And this is kind of not very clear what I mean by that. So what do I mean by happy? So to define happy, uh, I would rather define unhappy. Uh, so we say that an employee is unhappy if and only, sorry, if and only if uh, it works for, a, if and only if when he, um, when he quit his company, he can be engaged in a company that he prefers. And a company is unhappy if and only if when the, the company um, actually uh, gets rid of his employee, then uh, she can get a better employee in the, in, um, in the company perspective. So that's give us the definition of stable which means that no employee prefers working for prefers working in a company that prefer him to their current employee. Actually, uh, it is everyone is as happy as they can be um, if we refer to the definition I just gave before. So, and why do we call it stable? Because if now say an employee saying employee F uh, uh, quit his company, he will never find a company where he can be happier than the current company he is working on. So now the question is, does there exi always exist such a stable solution? And the response is yes. The answer is yes. And uh, we just need this little condition that the number of company or the number of position in each, com uh, the number of position, uh, sum over all company, has to be equal to the number of employees. 
And uh, it's fa fairly easy to see that such a stable solution exists, and it's also fairly easy to construct such a solution. So what we need to do, we need to apply the following algorithm. Uh, so we ask each employee uh, for their favorite to apply to their favorite company. Then the company uh, choose only one employee, so one they prefer. They don't engage them, they just choose, it, choose them and uh, keep it in a box or I don't know. And then the other player actually apply to the second favorite company. The second favorite company once again choose only their favorite, but among the one that applies this time, but also with the one that has applied the last time, uh, which was the favorite. And we go on and go on and go on with such, such a circle. And we break if and only if uh, all companies have received application. And this actually must terminate it because all employees have all companies in their list. So with such an algorithm, we can construct a stable solution and therefore the theorem is true. Uh, now what we want to do is actually generalize the notion of stability for any game. And this generalization can be called Nash equilibrium. Okay. So just a little bit of notation. Uh, we denote by S, big S, uh, the, a strategy profile, which is just a table that contains one strategy per player. Okay. So an Nash equilibrium is a strategy profile such that for every player I and all uh, strategy for this player I, uh, we have that the utility function of this strategy would be always bigger than the utility any other utility function for the player, given that the other player also play a Nash equilibrium. Uh, so that's, sorry, that's just notation for saying, um, th uh, for saying uh, the strategy profile, but without the strategy of player E. So that's more or less what we have seen before uh, in the sense that if a player choose to play another strategy, he cannot be better than what he has given his context. <clears throat> so uh, now we can actually uh, approach price of anarchy. And to do that, we will uh, speak about the following game, which is uh, which word do I choose? Which word do I choose? Uh, do I choose to get from this point to this point? Uh, given that there are some constraint, constraint that I will explain. So uh, we can imagine roads to be a network. When I say network, I mean a graph, but I would mostly say network. And uh, edges are uh, represents roads and vertices represent intersection of roads. Uh, I also added this, which is called latency function and actually describes um, the time travel that you take from for going from this edge to this edge, uh, from this vertex to this vertex um, in, uh, in function of how many cars there are on these edges. And so in this one, for example, no matter how many uh, cars there are on, this, uh, on these edges, it will always take 60 units of time to travel from here to here. But for this one, for example, it is a, a linear function. So it will take uh, the number of cars there are in this road unit of time to travel from this vertex to this vertex. Uh, so that's the latency function we give to each edges such a latency function. The other, another important concept is actually the flow because we want to describe how many cars there are, there are currently in our network. And uh, this flow, can we can associate the flow to each edges, uh, which is uh, the number of cars there is in the, currently in these edges. And the last bit is actually a cost function that uh, measure more or less the time that every player takes for going from this uh, vertexes to this vertex. Uh, so to fix a little bit uh, ideas, I would just go uh, over an example. And I will also compute a Nash equilibrium uh, for this example in this network. So take that we have 60 travelers. 
um, what is clear is that the first one would go through this road. That's clear because if you go to this road, it would it would cost him only two units of time, and uh, the all the other road would be worse for him. So, it would be the same for any play any other player, uh, which would do this. Uh, it would be the same for any other player uh, among the sixty. Just the sixtieth player can actually also go there because it would cost him the same time as he, if he would go there. But to have a Nash equilibrium, actually, we, we need to go to there. So in a Nash, so this road is actually a Nash equilibrium for this game. And we can see it because if one player go through another road, namely this one, it would not be better than what, what he's currently doing. Uh, and so now we can compute uh, the cost function for this Nash equilibrium, or we can also call it a Nash flow, which is just a flow at Nash equilibrium. And uh, it's 60 times 60 plus 60 times 60, which gives this number. But actually, this is not the best possible uh, outcome uh, in the sense that if all players don't um, go for a Nash equilibrium, they can actually reach a really lower um, cost function, and which is the following. If half of the player goes through this road and half of the player could do, go through this road and simply ignore this road, they would have a cost function which is much, uh, much lesser than the one from Nash equilibrium. And that can be surprising because as we said before, Nash equilibrium is uh, we want to try to stay as happy as we can be in a context, in a certain given context. But it seems that actually we could be more happy than what we are just by doing, by computing a Nash equilibrium. And um, actually this motivates the definition of price of anarchy. But before, because it's in the title and it's also interesting, I would spend a little more time about this network. So this network is actually called the Bryce paradox, and uh, the Bryce paradox we can refer to it as uh, so. If we take out a road, it can be that it would improve traffic, which is actually what we've seen just before. Because if we take this road out, then player must split into half and half, and the traffic would be better. And one can say, yeah, but that's just a mathematical fact and nobody cares about it. But it's actually very important also for real road constructor, uh, engineer, because actually uh, this can happen pretty often in a random network. And uh, it has already happened in, all, in South Korea that um, the government has constructed a highway which has worsened the traffic. And uh, now it is closed because it was very, very uh, bad for the traffic and also for the people who live under it. Uh, so it has cost a lot of money not to take uh, into account this little graph. Uh, and so, as I said before, we actually now want to know how bad can a Nash equilibrium be uh, with respect to an optimal solution. And that is exactly what we call price of anarchy. So, uh, price of anarchy is simply the ratio of the worst Nash equilibrium over a network uh, over the world over the better optimal solution. But actually, there is only one optimal solution, and all Nash equilibrium have the same cost on a network. So we can get rid of the max. But uh, as it is a definition, I have kept the max here. So uh, why price of anarchy? Why do we name it that way? Because it seems a little bit dramatic as a name. But actually, it is not at all, because uh, Nash equilibrium means every player maximize his own good, given the context in which he is, in which he, he plays. Uh, so namely, we can refer to it as selfishness. And uh, in the paper I read to prepare this talk, actually, it is. Um, Refer as self. This problem is refer as selfish routine. And uh, for an optimal solution, 
we cannot have an optimal solution from natural uh, from natural game because for a natural game we must have a Nash equilibrium. So for having an optimal solution, we need someone to say this road doesn't exist. So we need some sort of entity that would give a rule uh, that would give a rule to say this is not a possible move. So actually, uh, Nash equilibrium is how bad it is to be selfish. So price of anarchy uh, can be described to be as how bad it is to be selfish over how uh, over uh, how uh, some regulation can make this thing better. So that's price of anarchy. I hope it was clear. And now uh, we would go to an interesting characterization, actually. And uh, all of the theorem about price of anarchy uh, depends on this characterization. And as we have seen before on this network, uh, we have the price, the, uh, sorry, we have the Nash equilibrium and the price of anarchy in the same network. So namely, it can be, it can be very good if an optimal flow would be a Nash flow on the certain network, but with difference latency function. And actually, on this network, we can see it really easily. Because if we take something hugely big in this place, uh, we can see actually that uh, nobody would go through there to this edge. So it would be like this one doesn't exist, because nobody wants to pay the cost to go through this edge. But this way of doing it is actually not general, because we need to know what the optimal solution is before doing it. What we want now is given Nash equilibrium, we want to found, find the, Nash, uh, the optimal flow. And this can, be, this can be done by this little function, which is called the, lat the marginal latency function, and it, which is simply the derivative of the flow times the um, latency function. But I've, I've written it in a more uh, expanded way. And so if we look at this function, Actually, in this network, uh, this 60 would stay the same because this is 60 and this is null, and this is zero. And this x will, be, will become 2x because we have x here and x here, and that's one. So we will have 2x, and the zero will also be, uh, will also stay zero. So we will we'll have the following, um, the following uh, equilibrium, Nash equilibrium, which is this one. So the one that we have found before. So that's a very good uh, characterization because it means that once we have a Nash flow, it suffices to look at the network and then change the, all the latency function with this function. And we will have our optimal flow as a Nash equilibrium. And that's really good. And as we will see now, uh, it is also very powerful. Uh, so now what we want to do is to bound, actually, the price of anarchy. And uh, the motivation to bound it is that actually we want to be our, our, we want to know how worst it can be to be selfish. Um, how, yeah, how worst it can be to be selfish. And actually, we already know that it is lower bounded by one because uh, an optimal solution can never be um, less efficient than a Nash equilibrium by definition, because uh, an optimal solution is simply a minimization of the cost function. And the Nash equilibrium is something a little bit more complicated. Uh, and so what we need to bound from above the price of anarchy is actually a, a new definition, which is the anarchy value. And the anarchy value is actually a computation of a, a class of latency function. I mean, a family of latency function, if you want, uh, which is denoted by this L. And then we have this absolutely idious expression. But this absolutely idious expression is nothing different from we want to compute the price of anarchy over this network for a latency function L in this class and for the function for the latency function one for the above. And so what we do with this formula is simply we take the worst price of anarchy over this network. And 
what is nice with this formula is that actually it gives us an analytical value for our price of ANAC. And we also have this condition, which would be, uh, we will see uh, that actually this is really nice to compute things uh, in a later stage. So um, now we actually have a theorem that say that if uh, the latency class, namely the class of latency function or family of latency function is a good latency class. When I say good, I mean that at least one must be in this latency class, because if one is not in this latency class, then um, the computation we would, we do would not have any sense. But it's a little bit more complicated, but the details are not so important. Uh, and we take AL to be the energy value of this uh, latency class, uh, and G to be a network um, with latency function in this class L, then we have the following equality, which is pretty surprising, which say that the worst Nash equilibrium, uh, the, sorry, the worst, the worst price of anarchy has to be equal to the anarchy value. So what we say here is that given a network, really, really complicated network with a latency function in a certain class, uh, it suffices to compute actually the price of anarchy, the worst price of anarchy on this network to have an upper bound. So we can be satisfied with this theorem, uh, but actually the anarchy value may not be um, finite. It may be that this anarchy value actually is infinite, and it may be that the price of anarchy is also infinite in a certain network. So there is no bound to it. And even this theorem doesn't give a numerical bound to price of anarchy. So that's a pretty bad news, but the good news is that actually if we use this theorem, we can get a very interesting result for class of polynomials. And it seems pretty, reasonable to think that actually uh, the class of polynomials uh, can be enough to model uh, traffic on a network because uh, it would be very hard to imagine a road where actually you need an exponential function uh, to model how um, the time your time of travel will depend on uh, the number of cars and it would be also difficult to imagine a logarithm function to, to be this kind of, uh, to have this kind of property. So with the class of latency function, actually we are pretty happy. Uh, there are other theorem which are a specification for other class of latency function, which are kind of the same with the same form. And uh, they are also interesting, but uh, what we want to do today is this one. So, uh, namely, so we take the class of polynomials at the of degree at most p, which we denote by this, and uh, now we have by the following that's the supremum of the price of anarchy of a, a net. Uh, yeah, I, I forgot to put a network here over whatever a network we want would be at most this one. And once again, what we do here, we just compute the anarchy value. And I would, I want to also do a proof of this result, which uh, begin by the following. So we just have to compute an anarchy value by our precedent theorem. This theorem say to us as a latency function, polynomial latency function, a good latency function, we just have to compute the anarchy value for our theorem and to get this expression. And actually it is even better than that because we don't have to compute the anarchy value for any polynomial of degree at most p. It suffices to compute um, the anarchy value for polynomials, for monomials of degree at most p. And why is that? It is a, a pretty common trick in graph theory when you have such a problem is that actually you uh, separate your uh, edges into p edges and each of them has a monomial 
uh, as a monomial um, um, latency function. So, and then you do just sum up the, all the latency function to get uh, your polynomial. So that's our claim, and it's fairly easy to see that's actually it holds. And now what we want to do is actually we want to apply this definition to our specific problem. So the first computation we will do is actually we will try to compute what lambda is. And to do that, we use this condition. And this condition, uh, with the fact that we compute the marginal latency function, uh, would say us that actually lambda is equal to one plus i over uh, power minus one over i. And this is fairly easy to see because, I mean, we just, it's just a quick computation. And then the another term we want to compute is actually this one. And we have the following, which is by definition. And then we have simply uh, by replacing uh, lambda in this equality, we have the following. So we have almost all, we have all the term in this equation, so we can replace them now. And we have the following formula, which is more, much more nice than this one, uh, because it doesn't depend on error. And so we can get rid of this problem because we don't have an error in this expression. And uh, so we just have to take the supremum over all um, monomials of degree at most p. But it's sure that actually the most, the highest degree would be the degree, degree p. So we have the following because it just we just have to take uh, a monomial of degree p to get the following. And so now with a little algebraic manipulation, we actually get this result. So just to summarize, what we have done is actually we have computed the maximal price of anarchy on uh, any network with a polynomial uh, latency function, no matter how big it is and no matter uh, what we want, uh, no matter how we uh, rely, uh, how we, yeah, no matter how big it is and no matter how complicated it would be, this must be the bigger price of anarchy that we will pay to travel through this network. And actually, uh, for one, this would be faulted, and then it would become less uh, interest, uh, less friendly value. So that was all what I wanted to say today. And thank you very much for attending. And yes, if you have questions, you can tell, you can ask them. I would be very happy to answer. Okay, Matthias, I, I see no questions in the chat, so maybe I ask a question. Can you please okay. explain again the in the second game you presented the the grafter? Um, yeah, actually, the, the yeah this one. So the idea is you start on the top left uh, on on the on the left part, and you yeah, yeah. want to get on the right part exactly. Yes. And exactly. and what are these x's there? I mean, how do you actually count the the utility function? Or I I I can't see the difference between a sixty and an x. Oh, okay. Sorry, uh, I miss it. Okay. I mean, uh, uh, maybe it's clear, but I, I can't get it. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I, I'm sorry. The example was a little bit, uh, perhaps a little bit fuzzy for this one, for that. Uh, so what I mean is that actually uh, for traveling from this vertices to these vertices to these edges you take 60 units of time no matter how okay. many players there are in this edge okay yeah and in this one you take the number of player there is because x uh, is the latency function and the latency function depends on the flow okay so so if we if we think of this as a street uh yes. if you if you go on the street which is 60 you always go uh, you always like need an hour to go on yes. this street on this road, and if you go on on X road, if there are many people on the road, it takes longer. And if I'm alone yeah. there, I just go super fast. Okay. Yeah. And and what uh, what you want to 
to maximize or minimize is how much time one player get, uh, needs from left to right or everybody? No, actually, uh, as we have seen before, uh, minimize one or the other are kind of the same problem. Uh, but okay. uh, what I do... So an optimal solution for just one player will be the optimal solution for everyone. Yeah, because... Despite you, you said that if half of the player go one direction and half go the other direction is better. Uh, yes, yes, yes. But the problem is that actually you also have to have a Nash equilibrium because you can't control every player by a kind of... Uh, you can say, okay, you would go there, you would go there, you would go there. Every player is independent. And we oh, choose okay, a certain strategy. Ah, uh, okay, I see, I see. And so so that's... actually, it's not like a strategy for each individual player, but it's uh, a strategy that would work like on a general player. Yes. But exactly. then in different situations, this might not be the best solution. Yes. That everybody chooses the, the general strategy. Yes, sorry, that was not clear for okay. me. No, 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 maybe I am really not used to game theory, so I just wanted to understand this, this graph here. But it was a really nice talk. I, I found it really interesting and easy to follow, actually, despite I didn't check Thank you. this part. But 